Um, so we're passionate about supporting small businesses. We know that they're fundamental to the success and the economic uh, economic prosperity of this region that we all feel so strongly about. So sharing our levy funds and our expertise in apprenticeships has helped create over 300 apprenticeships op opportunities in SMEs across the region, especially in those critical STEM areas like advanced IT, engineering and science and technology, which are absolutely vital to the region's key industries and we may talk about, about a bit later. So the theme of this year's National Apprenticeship Week is build the future. And none of us here today will be in any doubt that the road to recovery will be tough and will present us with a number of challenges. Skills gaps have become wider and more exposed during the pandemic. And our West Midlands Mayor, Andy Street, talked about this during our big conversation event at the end of last year, describing the need to address this as mission critical. And we're convinced that apprenticeships are a valuable and precious asset that will be a really important force in our journey to help the West Midlands recover. So today's conversation is a really important one in terms of us helping the, um, in the best way that we can to work together, not just to make the most of the levy transfer fund, but to ensure everything we can do to provide the apprenticeship opportunities and create new, stable and high quality well-paid sustainable jobs so without further ado i'm going to stop talking and i'm going to hand over to ian who i think is going to question louise a bit more yeah. on what this is all about i am it is mastermind question we're putting louise in the in the chair um so um thank you so much for that joe um so louise i know we talk about apprenticeship and levy transfer and you and i breathe this stuff but um perhaps if we get started by kind of grounding ourselves if you help us understand a little bit about what is this thing apprenticeship levy transfer and a few words about what it is and how you got started what prompts this to be important for the West Midlands okay fabulous thanks Ian um, hello everyone I'm Louise Ward I'm the apprenticeship manager at the West Midlands combined authority so I sit alongside with the man Andy Street um, just to give a little bit of background in terms of the apprenticeships um, and where we are and, and where we, we kind of partnered with Lloyd's <coughs> excuse me um it's, it forms part of the government apprenticeship reforms that back in 2017 the apprenticeship levy was introduced for, to organizations with over a three million wage bill so that meant that any organization it's probably around about 22,000 organizations were affected they pay half a percent into a digital account i'm not going to get too technical but that's that's the overview really in terms of that now, there is an opportunity whereby larger organisations can pledge up to 25% of their unspent money to smaller businesses. So we kind of, back in 2019, uh, we worked quite closely with the Mayor and, and in the Department for Education about how do we create a regional levy transfer by partnering with larger organisations. So really, Lloyds was one of the first that came on board with us as a partner and, and springboarded really um, to where we are to date. So, um, just to give you a bit of a picture across the West Midlands, uh, we've got around about 40 businesses that have collaborated with us to support the SME market. Um, a total pledge, and, and, and obviously Lloyd's has a massive impact to that, of around £21 million um, over the next few years. So it's an integral part really to try and sustain apprenticeship numbers across the region. Um, that equates so far roughly since the scheme was launched, probably middle of middle of 2019. We've um, so far supported 600 SMEs, which I think some of you are here today, so thank you very much, and over 1,800 apprentices in the sector. So again, some of the apprentices are here today. So um, so yeah, we, we do need more. We we appreciate that, you know, there are more that more opportunities that we need to do. We need to support particular um, unemployed groups, really. So it's all really important. And I'd imagine in the context of the current pandemic, even more so because you're already starting to see the early data of what the pandemic is doing to the West Midlands economy and the employment landscape as well. Yeah, I mean, currently at the West Midlands Command Authority, three LEP areas, we've got two, just over 216,000 employments that have been furloughed. That data is as of the end of December. Obviously, there is a view that when furlough finishes post April, we more, will see more job losses, um, which will happen across the region unless obviously the furlough is extended. Um, climate count within the region, I think, as with any other region, um, we're probably looking in the region. So the age bracket of 16 to 24 year olds um, are just short of 44,000 young people. 
And then those that are adults are, are just short of 168,000 people. So I think it's about how do we come together collectively as organisations, you know, as local enterprise partnerships, as, as combined authorities and employers to support those individuals for permanent job opportunities or indeed work kickstart work placements for those that don't know. Um, it's a new government scheme that, that's being launched. Um, and then ultimately about trying to recruit apprentices. And I think Kat will talk later on, but she, she has a really good model whereby she's managed to, to, to recruit in terms of that. Um, sure. In terms of just to give a bit of a picture around where we are with apprenticeship starts, um, since March 2020, again, as with any other um, combined authority region and, and nationally, there has been a drop in apprenticeship starts compared to last year. So you're probably talking in our region alone about 20% of those um, and apprenticeship vacancies have kind of considerably dropped also. Um, again, you know, it's about how do we support employers? We have around in the region about 240,000 smaller employers across the West Midlands, um, with 60% of our workforce are employed by those smaller employers. So actually, how do we support those to kind of springboard any opportunities? I know the government have introduced the incentive grants, and that's obviously a way forward, but actually we can do more. Sure. So the next few years, I know we've been busy with levy transfer over the last two years, but actually through circumstance, the next few years are going to be really important for you guys. Yeah, completely. It's, it's around the higher skills are needed. So I know that two fifths of all our job um, and less than a third of current workforce is skilled to qualified at level two or below. So actually, we need to look at how do we bring those opportunities forward and how do we upskill people at level three uh, and level four. So, so I think in terms of the levy transfer, um, one of the areas that obviously we've worked quite closely with yourself, Ian, is about how do we remove the barrier for funding for smaller employers. So whilst it's only 5%, critically, you can actually take on more, more um, apprentices by having that 5% supported. And again, it's, it's, it's far more achievable, really, in terms of, of taking on new talent. Sure. OK, cool. Thank you so much for the grounding, Louise. Have I got, to sit, in, have I got to sit in the black chair now and you're going to ask, me, ask yeah. something of me? <laughs> right. What are you going to ask? Yeah, yeah. so... So I suppose now let's let's flip it on in terms of your um, support, Ian. So, so I think really in terms of our levy partnership, um, it's now approaching, I think, just over two years. How do you feel the scheme's been supporting um, the organisation? Well, I think you touched, I think for me, I think you touched on, you know, some of the really important points. You know, we kind of sometimes in the world of apprenticeships think of like the big guys like Lloyd's you know we have two nearly 2,000 apprentices inside Lloyd's banking group they're big numbers but of course what we have to remember is 60 percent of the UK typically will be working for small and medium-sized businesses so actually the small and medium-sized businesses are really important in 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 here and and we know how the pandemic's affected that sector uh, and I think what I've learned through the journey through levy transfer is it's 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 not just the money. Money is important. It oils the wheels. But each time I have conversations with SMEs, I think what's always struck me is how um, confidence and reassurance, somebody on their side, somebody adding a little bit of impartial guidance and just saying, we've seen it this way, we've seen it this way, and just helping, ha helping them develop the courage to make that decision to invest. Because it is a big decision when when some when a business takes on an apprentice, and they are taking that person on in good faith for a good number of years. Um, so I applaud all the organisations I've worked with as SMEs, and and I, I love hearing the stories, which is why I like these types of events as well. But it is really important that we're standing behind, and and Lloyd's we've made a very conscious decision to stand behind STEM and digital because we looked at our data and we looked at where skill shortages were before the pandemic in critical areas of advanced skilling. And sometimes the cost of training in those areas is quite high and prohibitive. So we wanted to be there in the areas where there was greatest needs and greatest challenge from a cost perspective. Um, and yeah, you know, we're, we're to 300 of your quota and then overall with other partners across the UK, we now have somewhere approaching 500 apprentices who are working for small and medium sized companies. And we kind of regard them a little bit like our extended family of Lloyds. We may not know them all, but we uh, are wishing them well all the same. 
So um, I think Louise and I can talk about each other for yeah. a good while and we can have our own own event, but it seems a bit rude to invite guests and it's just the Ian and Louise show. So I think the, I think what we do now is let's let's kind of meet some of the SMEs, only a fraction because we can't squish everybody into one hour. Um, but, um, you know, joining us today then. So we've got Kat with the fabulous corporate background, has got all that sorted from Crimson. Uh, we've got Paul who hasn't bought his machinery with him today but we'll explain all about what Flannery's does um, as well we've got Linda from Quadros um, over there hi Linda you moved in there and we've got Richard and Sade together who will explain to us uh, in due course why they're the only people who are allowed to be in the same camera shot in social distancing from midterm engineering so thank you guys um, for uh, for coming along and if we start off with um, with Kat with the corporate background then so First of all, I think is congratulations to you and Crimson for winning relatively recently in National Apprenticeship and Regional Apprenticeship Awards, which is just awesome. I said to you, didn't I, when the when they when they yelled out, you know, they said the winner is Crimson, and I was raising my glass of wine to you from a distance for that one. Well done. Tell Thank us a little you. bit. Tell us a little bit about why investing in apprenticeships is important to to you guys. Gosh, well, I mean, we are, I, I love to hear the word pas passion, um, Joe. you mentioned it before, because we're absolutely passionate about apprenticeships at Crimson. Um, we're a small organisation, we're based in business, um, Birmingham Business Park, we've got uh, roughly 100 employees, and 22 of those are now apprentices. Um, so, and our, our apprenticeship programme is actually at the heart of our um our strategic growth plan. Um, sitting in the tech sector, um, you know, even before the pandemic, we were um, challenged to find tech talent uh, because of the digital skills gap. Everyone's talking about it is very real, particularly in the areas that we're, we're working in around sort of uh, Microsoft Dynamics consultants. Um, we're scaling for growth and our apprentices are a part of our succession planning. So they're going to be our future managers and our future leaders. And they join us from a variety of backgrounds. And I think for us, it, this is really important when you talk about up skilling um you know we, we we do recruit from schools we recruit from universities grads but also from other sectors so last year we saw an increase in terms of career changes and that's vital you know we in terms of attracting um those those individuals who have started a career in a different area and for whatever reason they decide actually it's not working out for them or the future potential is not there and they choose to join to join the tech sector and i think the apprenticeship scheme gives them a really nice vehicle to do that um, and, and without a doubt, investing in the apprenticeship is of benefit to Crimson. Um, it allows our experienced IT consultants to delegate some of the simpler tasks um, to the apprentices and, and frees them up to do the, the more complex tasks. So, you know, immediately adding value there. Um, but for Crimson, it means more than that. We want to grow rounded, successful tech professionals, not only for Crimson as an, as an organisation helping us grow, but really to contribute overall to the UK digital growth journey. And, and that, of course, is even more critical in the current economic um, environment where, where we need to grow, um, you know, the, the revenues, of course, in the UK. Awesome. Just completely awesome. And I love <laughs> this point, which is so important, isn't it, about when you get to know apprenticeships and you understand that, yes, it provides a really interesting opportunity for young people, but we mustn't forget the the, the need for reskilling and upskilling within the broader economy as well and, and its broader potential. Thank you so much, Kat. Absolutely. Thank you. Louise, over to you. Yeah. Um, so looking at the world of construction, Paul um, from Flannery, uh, construction obviously is a big key area for the combined authority. Uh, we've done a variety of, of things such as construction gateway and obviously there's a lot of infrastructure um, projects that are happening within the region. How do you feel apprenticeships are helping to fill those gaps um, in terms of the evolving complexities for skills, particularly around construction? Yeah, well, I, I think um, I think apprenticeships are, are critical actually uh, in terms of a solution to there's a, to the employment and skills gaps there are within the construction industry. Uh, I mean, there's, there's there's lots of gaps around project management and civils. Um, from a plant point of view, which I'm going to talk a bit about, um, Flannery developed the new um, construction plant operative apprenticeship standard, um, which was approved at the end of last year. And that was really uh, designed to support big infrastructure projects like HS2, but I know you've got the Commonwealth Games coming up and other um, big infrastructure projects. and. Uh, you know, apprenticeships are sort of uh, front and centre of our skills development and people strategy, really, to ensure that we 
um, you know, re recruit and, and widen the talent pool for people getting in, in construction so they can get sustainable jobs. The, 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 the lights of HS2 give that sort of duration and, and size and length of a project that really enables construction employers to really take apprentices to their heart. And we, we you know, we'll be taking on at least 30 apprentices this year alone. Um, but that will ramp up in the next two years as those big infrastructure projects um, really kick on. So um, we're a big supporter of apprenticeships and we're just, you know, really glad to be here and, you know, and, and supporting, um, supporting you all in, in developing it. Great. And I, I suppose in terms of construction projects, they're still continuing, even though we've, we're, we're going through a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still been really busy. We've 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 got uh, a large portion of our fleet is still out on hire and it has been throughout the pandemic. So, it, you know, it's been really sort of business as usual for us in, in lots of ways. Um, obviously, a lot of increased protocols, but a lot of our operators are, are you know, are working um, on their own in the cab anyway. So actually, from a socially distanced point of view, it's it, it works quite well. But um, we, and we've actually just um, last week opened uh, up our, our new training centre, which is called the Operator Skills Hub, which is supported by the West Midlands Combined Authority. And Andy Street was at the uh, virtual opening. But that's also to help train the apprenticeships of the future in construction. So uh, we're really excited about that and, you know, really looking forward to taking on more apprentices. Right. Thanks, Paul. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so Linda, who's up in the top left hand corner of my screen then. So in Quadras, this is all in the financial services sector. And then we, you know, we know over the last decade that sector, you know, has had to cope with and, and work with increasingly complex um, legislation and regulation in the sector. So I wanted to kind of ask you really, what's your perspective on how apprenticeships are kind of helping to raise the standards of professionalism within within your within your sector? Um, you're absolutely right, Ian. There's been an awful lot of regulation for a number of years, and it seems to be on a changing uh, daily basis. They're changing. Um, what we wanted to do was by bringing in apprentices to us is then making sure that they're actually learning how to do the job properly, that they're learning and understanding financial services without having sort of this background noise dis disturbing the learning of that. Um, and it, for us, it's really important that they actually know how to do things properly so that we can maybe raise the awareness with um, the public of Britain that financial advisors and financial services are a professional um, organisation and should be, be treated as such instead of the um, sort of double glazing, knocking on the door type uh, appearance that people have of us still. So I think bringing in young people in as apprentices, their minds are just amazing. They learn so much. They're very good with tech. We, we, we try to use, um, we're paperless. We do a lot of things remotely with clients anyway, and we were doing that before the pandemic started. Um, and they're easy to adapt to that as well. One of the things I noticed um, when I started really trying to get into understanding apprenticeships as well is the rigour that's involved in examination standard, which I think relates to the point that you're making, isn't it? There is no hiding place. And at the end of the apprenticeship, the apprentice is in front of an endpoint assessor who you can't influence or say, I'm going to do the homework for them. They they have to meet a standard. So I guess that's that independence is also really important in terms of restoring trust back into your sector. It is absolutely. And, you know, they are doing um, industry examinations alongside the apprenticeship as part of that. And I'm, I'm all for examinations. I'm all for qualifications within the industry, which only really came into um, its being 25 years ago, which is not that long ago that literally anybody prior to that could basically call themselves a financial advisor. Um, say working in financial services so I think it's really important and, and it's something that needs to be recognised most definitely and my apprentices work very hard we're on a we've got two apprentices currently and we've had one that's that's qualified um, and yeah they, they they need to get their exams which they're doing the work for and Catherine who you're going to hear from later from from Quadros she's she wants to be a financial advisor and so part of the journey that we're taking her through is to fast track her through an apprenticeship so that she can then become a trainee financial advisor as well. That's awesome. So, Catherine, we look forward to catching you in a few moments time. Lou. 
Yeah, fantastic. So um, over now to um, we have Richard, Andrew and Shardy, um, family run business, um, hence why why you're sitting together. Um, tell us a little bit about your business and obviously um, as business owners of a family run business, I think you tend to find you having to wear many hats and, and Kat, I, I had a discussion around that earlier, <laughs> you know, one minute you're HR, one minute you're, you know, you're mentoring apprentices. So there's so many different aspects to run with a business. Um, tell us how you found navigating your way through the world of apprenticeships and a little bit about your business. Yeah, well, we're a mid-firm, we uh, make food systems, so a lot of sheep not work companies, uh, basically laser cutting, which is an online powder coating, and things like that. We've employed about 190 people across the group now. And as family businesses, one of the things we always struggle with a lot is if we're looking at apprentices, we tend to be looking at relatively low numbers of apprentices at a time. So there seems to be a big overhead in actually locating the right skill sets that we need and then locating the right candidates for it. And I think a couple of our biggest success stories, uh, like Owen, have come through. Uh, one of them was, I think, going was one of these open days at the college where one of our guys went in and got to talk to people. And because you, you tend to be able to find out a lot about someone within a few seconds of first meeting them, it sort of removes the process of going through all the documentation, CVs, and everything else, and speeds it up a lot for us. And unless you're employing ten or twenty at a time, you can't really allocate the resources of a small company to effectively vet and identify exactly what skill sets, qualifications and everything else you need. Okay, brilliant. Um, do you tend to find that you bring in talent in kind of gives a bit of a flavour and a different angle to, to, to the business? Oh, definitely. Yeah. New skills, uh, new people, new ideas is something that's absolutely essential to a small business. And although we've got a lot of different hats, a lot of different companies doing a lot of different things, always trying to expand the range of what we can do and expand our marketplace. Um, so bringing apprentices in is uh, absolutely the right thing for us. I'd say sometimes it can just be a little bit hard because we're trying to do it at such a low volume. Yeah, yeah, of course. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. So we're just going to have a little bit of a pause from uh, putting our, um, our SME guests uh, let them get a little bit of a breather and I'm just going to hand back to uh, Joe and Sakib as well in um, you know having heard what you've heard if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask of our, our business guests before we get to chat to the apprentices. <laughs> 